Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and are not a subscriber of Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, make sure and visit my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks provides reproduction and upgrade decal sets for Transformer toys from Generation 1 to the latest modern figures. Make sure and stop by the ToyHacks Armory, where they can equip your figures with new weaponry in multiple colors, and Toy Stages provides backdrops for figure displays and photography. Each purchase with Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that can be used for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom. Scorponok. Now this is one figure that I really have my reservations on getting because the online images of him just really didn't look that good. And then once I picked up the near perfect Transform Element Stinger Warrior, I was really debating on deleting my pre-order from Entertainment Earth. But I'm glad I didn't because he arrived in the mail yesterday. Really took me by surprise and the reviewer in me really wanted to check out the Hasbro offering compared to the third party. So now let's take a quick look at the packaging. We've got Scorponok here in robot mode, Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom, and more of that fantastic Kingdom artwork. You got Scorponok in Scorpion mode and robot mode. Back of the packaging, you've got more images of the toy and that horrible image that I was talking about that I'm gonna go over a little bit more in the review. And there he is in Scorpion mode once again. You also see his little cyber bee. On the side of the packaging is the outstanding Kingdom artwork. So let's go ahead and get this Scorponok out of the packaging and see if this bot has some sting. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Scorponok all opened up and out of his packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions that, as usual, are very well illustrated and very easy to follow. He also comes with a trading card. This one is Black Arachnia, and when you peel back the sticker, you've got another image of Black Arachnia holding a spear. I don't think I have that one yet, so look, that looks pretty cool. And you have weapons for Scorponok, including his Mega Missiles. And you have two missiles right here fused together with a 5 millimeter peg here on the end. So you can actually take these missiles, open up Scorponok's claw, and put them in there like so. And he also comes with his little Cyber Bee. And the Cyber Bee doesn't look too bad. It's got some really good sculpting, some nice paint applications but I wish it had a five millimeter peg right there on the chest. You can see the molded in wings too, not wings, the molded in legs. That looks really good, but the peg is here on the butt and that's so you can plug it into Scorponok claws, but I wish he had a peg there, like I said, on the bug chest so he could plug into other bots because in the show, the Cyber Bee was used to inject venom to, you know, affect Maximal. So this one, if you're going to peg him into some other bot, it's going to be sticking out and looking weird. But it does look good if you peg it into Scorponok's claws like this. So now you have Scorponok all armed and ready for battle with his Mega Missiles in one claw and his Cyber Bee in the other. So now let's take a closer look at Scorponok himself. Now, when I first opened Scorponok up out of his packaging, my first thought was, wow, he looks so much better than his images online. And that's because the images online have him mistransformed, 
with his beast legs all splayed out all over the place. For packeting, he was in the package like this. The legs were all folded up and stuck in the cardboard insert, and that looks so much better, much more show accurate than the legs all over the place. Also, another issue that I noticed once getting hit this guy in hand was some of the other stock photos show the scorpion mode head up over the robot head. It's actually tucked in here. We'll get to that later in transformation. But this image right here shows the scorpion head over top of the robot head. So I don't know what it is with Hasbro. If you're going to be promoting your product, at least have your people transform the figure right for photos. So enough of complaining about that. Let's look at Scorponok. He's not bad looking, but he's not great. He's got a very blocky torso, I think really detracts from the character or the figure, kind of gives him a dad bod, but he does have a lot of nice sculpted detail and texture. Hopefully the light's catching this just right, but you can see the texture on the claws and the chest there. I mean, it looks really good. It's like a insect exoskeleton. Take a closer look at the face sculpt. The face sculpt is kind of a hit and miss. Well, one, the head sculpt looks great, but the face sculpt itself, I do not like that. I mean, I think the mouth is way too big. He looks like a bulldog. Just <laughs> the lips are too much. He's got his little pointed purple goatee, the yellow visor. Once again, great paint applications. The yellow there on the tusks and the crest. Little yellow right there for the center display or center emblem. Now, due to transformation, he does have this big crack down his chest. And if it would peg in a little tighter, it wouldn't look bad because he has all these other molded details on the chest as well. But it is what it is. Legs look really good too. Lots of great molded details and paint applications. Now the tail, the tail could be better. It's got a lot of hollowness right there. I think that sucks. And on the back of the tail, it's really bad with this hollow section, but that's due to transformation. So I'm not too worried about the hollowness right here because when he's displayed on the shelf, you're not going to see that. But this right here, that sucks. So somebody needs to get on that and make some filler pieces. Now, a lot of people are wondering how the Hasbro version of Scorponok compares to the Transform Element Stinger Warrior. And as you can see, Stinger Warrior is much more cartoon accurate. And actually, surprisingly, they're almost the same size. Now, another drawback that Hasbro has, the Stinger Warrior has the tail attached to his upper back, where the Hasbro version has the tail attached to his butt. In the cartoon show, Scorponok had the tail attached just like that, what gave him a lot more range of motion. Now, this is not too bad, but he can't really strike overhead like the Transform Element version. So let's go ahead and get him out of the way. I've already reviewed this guy. Let's focus on Hasbro. So let's do the articulation now, and we'll start with the tail. The tail can go way back here and has a joint there, and this stinger tip is on a ball joint. But like I said, it really doesn't have the range of motion like in the show. The arms can do a complete 360. They can go up and they can go down. There is a bicep rotation right there. And as you saw, a bicep bend. And that is really tight. Of course, I prefer to have my tight joints with my figures. Not going to complain. The claws, as you saw earlier, can open and close. And there is a wrist rotation. He also has a waist rotation here. Legs can go out and in, forward and back. There is a knee bend and ankle tilt. So he does have a lot of nice articulation, which is really, really good for your more modern figures. Now, if you don't like the missiles or cyber bee inside his claws, go ahead and remove these. I do wish these missiles were separate, but at least they can come out. The transform element, the missiles actually flipped up inside the claws so you could hide them out of the way. 
until you flip them out for battle. But with this Scorponok, you just pop them right out, and you have the option to use a blast effect if you like. So the blast effect plugs in there, and I do like that. I think that looks really cool. So now let's get Scorponok transformed into beast mode. Now before we get into transforming Scorponok into his beast mode, I want you guys to take a look at his claws. I just find these claws, the way they have these molded, they look so weird in his robot mode. They got this weird angle and with the spikes, it makes it look like teeth. These claws remind me of Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors or a piranha plant from Mario. I just, they look like they could be a hand puppet. I hate his claws, but they suck in robot mode, but they'll actually look pretty good in scorpion mode. And we'll get to that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is let's rotate the arms all the way up like so. Now what we're going to do is split apart Scorponok's chest. Now it doesn't open all the way. It only goes about this far. And then you're going to take his head and fold down just to right there. And that is it. Now what we're going to do is bring the tail down and now take the scorpion legs and just manipulate these around. I have to move the shoulders up slightly, just like that. And now you're going to get these legs down and out of the way and rotating the middle section around and just bringing those down. They're on kind of a soft clicking ratchet joint. Let me show you if we'll pick it up. So see how that kind of locks in place. That comes into play later on. So just get these legs wrapped around and in position. Now you're going to lift the back section up, and this is where the robot head is hid. And this is kind of a pain to get a hold of. I just, I don't have the fingernails to do it. Let me see. Oh, there we go. I got it this time. So you're going to bring the scorpion head up and then shut this section. So the scorpion head goes over Scorpinox robot head. Now take these shoulders and turn these around. So you got these little spike sections facing in. Now once they're in like that, you're going to bring the shoulders even closer together so they'll actually finish hiding the robot head of Scorponok. And this part is really cool. I love his leg transformation. Flip the tail out and you're going to bring the waist section extended out further. Now what you want to do is pay attention to Scorponok's heels. He has one heel that's purple and one heel that's gray. So you want to rotate the legs around so the heel with the gray section here is now towards the tail. So then you're going to take the legs and rotate around. So you've got this little section right here. You want this to face toward the scorpion tail. So you can actually fold the leg up. Then you're going to rotate once again right there. So you've got the pointy heel facing toward the scorpion tail. And now you're going to fold the foot forward and just put the leg in the scorpion tail. And there's this little hole right here that that heel is going to fit into. And there you go. That fills up that big hollow spot on the tail. Now for the front of the scorpion, just turn the leg once again. You're going to bring the foot forward and you just fold it in on itself like so. Make sure everything's lined up right. The best way to know is these blue sections here are facing down. Just get this angle just right. And there you go. Now, unfortunately, that's what that's going to look like. It's kind of sloppy looking. But once you get these legs back in place, make sure and snap them down like I showed earlier. He should stand up fairly well. So the legs kind of balance him out. Otherwise, he's going to be flopping around on this. 
I hate that. That sucks, but there's really no way. I guess you could angle it up. Let me see if the leg will fit into that slot on the knee. It does not. So you just kind of angle that like so. Get the arms positioned just right. Get the claws open here. And there we go. We have Scorpionok in Scorpion mode. And I like Scorpionok's Scorpion mode. It actually looks like a realistic Scorpion. And as I said earlier, the claws work more for Scorpion mode than they did for Robot mode. If you actually compare a picture of a real Scorpion, it works, even with the red tip of the tail and scorpion mode it's pretty long and i dig it i really like this he's got red eyes right here on top he's got the red fangs the way the spikes on the shoulder pads look kind of like looks like mandibles maybe he's got all the same articulation in the arms that was in the robot mode and of course you can put in the missiles and the cyber bee a lot of articulation here with these legs. Now the front legs and the back, there is a ball joint here near the connecting point of the body, and that's it. There's no extra ball joints for the knees, which is disappointing. And the middle legs, you got two legs hooked together on one ball joint. And these legs are also very, very hollow. I hate how his robot face is just right there. I wish I could have tucked more into the chest along with this whole leg section here. Ingenious transformation with the leg in the tail. I just wish they could have done something with the leg underneath. Now articulation with the tail is kind of limited now because of the leg. I mean it just doesn't have much movement at all except for up here on top and the little stinger tip which is on a ball joint. So now let's compare Kingdom Scorponok to the Transform Element Stinger Warrior. So you can see where Kingdom goes for the more realistic approach, where the Transform Element Stinger Warrior has that more cartoon look. So there you go, guys. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorponok in Beast Mode. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorponok with Kingdom Beast Megatron, Kingdom Black Arachnia, once again with Transform Element Stinger Warrior, and Earthrise Titan Class Scorponok. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorponok is all right. He's just not at all what I was expecting. To be honest, I haven't really been impressed with this third wave of the Kingdom line. I got Rhinox, wasn't really impressed with him, and now Scorponok here has left me wanting. I was just really expecting a lot more, especially after wave one and two just totally knocked it out of the park. Now I do find his transformation pretty ingenious, but there's just a lot of sculpting issues and design flaws that I think Hasbro really should have passed on. Though I do like his beast mode. I like the realistic Scorpion opposed to the cartoon version of the Stinger Warrior. So there you go, guys. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorpionok. So, does a Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Scorpionok belong in your collection? Well, this one was a little underwhelming for me. For one, I wish he was a little bit bigger. Two, I find that they really had some odd design choices with him. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the dad bod that he has, and these claws just suck. I don't understand why they went for this look. Now, it does look bad in robot mode, but scorpion mode actually looks pretty good. I like the realistic approach to his beast mode. But all in all, I just think this guy could have been a lot better. And he's more recommended for those of you who want to complete your line of Kingdom figures. So you have your Predacon lineup. But if you want something a little bit more show accurate for us adult collectors, 
I would go with the Stinger Warrior. But this guy, he's good, not great. So maybe wait for him on clearance. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I have channel memberships here on YouTube, and I also have a Patreon page. I also want to give a huge shout out to my newest channel member, Benjamin G. Whitcomb. Benjamin, thank you so much for your support. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!